soul, life, being. It kind of like sometimes kind of like puzzle us, right? It kind of like what we really are. If somebody have the Holzman, you can read it in the Holzman for me. Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 6 and 7. But water would come out of the ground and water the entire surface of the land. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. And the man became a living being. Good. Right? And that's how the whole man translated. Now, what is man? As we learned last week about the Nefesh, the Ruah, the Neshema, the Chaye, and Yahada. Right? Yahad. What is man? What is this soul that we're speaking about? What is the, the Ruah, the man? Because Plato, what Plato said, remember I said Plato said, we are what? The true us is the, the spirit. And if the true us is the spirit, then what happened to this flesh? This flesh is not you? It begs a lot of questions. So now, if we try to dissect this flesh from the spirit, could that, is that possible? If you try to take your spirit out of your flesh, what is going to happen to you? Your, to your body, is not going to function. It's not going to function. You will be what? Dead as we know it. We are going to be just a corpse. It's just going to be corpse. But what makes us, or what gives us animation? What gives us functionality? What gives us this ability to move as we are moving? What gives us that? What? Huh? The nervous system. The nervous system. And what we say the nervous system is? The Ruach. The Ruach is that which what? Gives us the ability and the impulses to feel and to relate with what? Our surrounding. So now, when he, and a, a beautiful question was raised this evening, and we will get to that, but I just want to give a little short backdrop so we can get into the question that was raised here this evening. What if man, man who, we, what we have to remember that now everything is now being what? Formed. Hashem is forming everything. What is forming everything with? You know, I did some teaching here a few months back. And I said that Hashem formed all of creation. Hashem formed all of creation with? What do you form it with? With the? Aleph Tav. The Aleph Tav. And which is known... It's, it's not a word that is transferable. It's not translated in the English. However, this word is used as wit. It is used as um, an arrow. It is always identifying. It is always identify, identifying the direct object of the, 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 the statement or the sentence. It always go right after the direct object that is speaking about. Bereshit bara Elohim, who is a direct object that is speaking about et. And what follow? Heavens, Hashemayim. So now, this always follow what is actually going to take place. By who is actually performing what is taking place. And what makes the Hebrew so beautiful is that it's clear in now what you are apprehending in reference to things as it began, begins. Now, as Yeshua, he now is forming all things. And he making man, and we say man, but he take the Adama. And remember I always say, as we just read, the Adama is the earth, the red earth, the dirt. And it's red dirty talk. 
because when he made the dead, the dead is the richest, the richest dirt we could ever find is red dirt, red soil. And what makes it so important? Did you hear what he said before? Right before he said that, right before he took the dirt, he said, What comes up from the dirt? Oh, the, the mist, the water came up from the earth. Water didn't use to fall down, it came up from the earth. So then it was like it, what Hashem is saying everything must rise up, everything must ascend. Everything must ascend, and it's impossible for things to ascend on its own. It's impossible, but yet still, it had that ascendancy in itself at the time of creation. However, after, after the fall, after man fall, what we had? We had another falling. What do you call it? The flood. Because after he fell, all it was all just coming up from the earth. And to give us a direct understanding of what is going on with us, the water came down to show us that we are not even choosing to ascend as how we were designed to ascend. We were designed to be higher than all that which came from the earth. Right there, those two passages of scripture, he showed us that we were designed to be more. And how we were designed to be more? Because all these animals, they cannot identify themselves. How they can't identify themselves? Because they don't have what? Neshema. They don't have Neshema. They have what? Nefesh. They have Nefesh. They have blood. They have what? Ruach. They have passion. They have desires. They have instinct. And this is what we all, this is why science can tell you we come from the what? Animal kingdom. And we can behave like animals. And because we can behave like animals, we ought to control the animal in us with our neshema. So now we can live a life as Christ lived as Haye. Haye. The life that we were called to live because now we are connected. We are fully. So now in theology, you have the dualistic or um, that dual approach that we are both flesh and spirit for some simpl simplification and then we have the um the tri um the tri uh the trinitarian view where we are mind body and spirit now regardless of what school of uh taught your whole uh, that is not to divide over because now what what why they say spirit, soul, and body, or mind, will, and spirit. All those words are used interchangeably because now of man's behavior. So now what you're having, you're having the mind, which is the central processing unit, and now you have the information that the mind is getting. Where is he getting it from? They say the soul, the soul of man, which is the invisible man that scientists are looking for in the mind that they can't find. And then you have the, the flesh, which carry out the, what, the actions of all that which you have interpreted in your mind. When Yahweh made mankind, anything that is made is a what? A secondary object. And once you make, once you make another, that other it's either it's going to be an inanimate object and an object that has a will, a uniqueness of choice, or it's just going to be what it is. We could, we could understand that. It could be a stone having no type of what? Function. No type of, well, when we say no type of function, because a stone do have a function. It all depends on what, when, how you define function. It don't have what we call um, observable mobility or behavior. 
it don't have observable mobility or behavior because science today is when they put a stone in a these different um, equipment that they have what are what are, what are, what are, what they're learning that a stone have what movement what's the movement in the stone vibrations there are vibration in every single thing that exists on this earth and because vibration exists in everything this is why with the polytheists or the what's the word i said last week and i was um i was searching for it panentheism and pantheism that god is in all god is in all and all is god so now if god is in all and all is god then what you have god now is part of everything now that cannot be true because all time, space, and matter had a what? Beginning. A beginning. Did God have a beginning? No, God didn't have a beginning. And anything that began didn't have, could have not been. But because it began, it will never stop being. It will always now be. That's the freedom that Hashem has created. Now, we as animate object with rational with reason because we have rational and reason ratson meaning we have a will to project whatever we want to do i can do what i want to do i have ratson i can do what i want to do could god control what i want to do could god control what i want to do no he gave you free will if you have rats on, then God cannot control. Could the devil control what you want to do? No. Could anyone control what you want to do? 